In this video, we're going to go over my personal top 10 most used VS Code extensions. I'm going to break up these extensions into two categories, visual and functional extensions. So visual extensions help you to code through visual representation, colors, and formats. Functional extensions help you to do something faster. Now, I do have a VS Code beginners video where we install VS Code from scratch and we set it up for web development. So if you're not familiar with VS Code at all, you may want to watch that video first and then come back here. And stick around to the end, I've got some extras that I want to share with you. All right, let's look at the extensions. And these are in no particular order. So I'll go to the extensions tab. And the first one is actually two extensions, but they're very similar. So these first few extensions are going to be the visual extensions. For my theme, I use the material theme. And for the icons, I use the material icon theme. So these are the icons that will show up in your file menu and at the top in your tabs. A lot of these visual extensions that I'm going to go over with you are personal preference. So for the theme, we'll go to our settings and we'll choose color theme. And I'm going to go ahead and just type material to get these sorted a bit. And we can just arrow through these. So this is the default material theme. And then there's the ocean, darker, uh, lighter. I, I don't know why anyone would use lighter. Pale night seems to be a very popular one. And then high contrast. Uh, I prefer the high contrast ones. So this is the default high contrast, ocean, darker, ugh, lighter, um, pale night again. So again, pale night, high contrast, that seems to be a very popular one, uh, but I actually prefer the darker high contrast. So again, personal preference. All right, the next one that we'll go over is prettier. And prettier does exactly what it says. It makes your code pretty. It formats your code uniformly throughout all of your documents. So there's one setting that I would recommend on this, and that is the format on save. So to get there, uh, you can press control or command comma, and then just type format on save. And by default, this is unchecked. So just check that, and then when you save your file, it will automatically format it for you. And I can demonstrate that for you. Let's just uh, let's go to this JavaScript file. And I'm just going to mess up a few of these lines. Tab that one over there. That one over there. All right, it's all messed up. So now I'm going to hit save. And it formats it perfectly for me. Uh, it will also format your quotation marks. So if I change these to double quotation marks, and then I hit save, it's going to automatically change them back to single, just because I prefer single. And that is a setting as well that you can set for whatever your personal preference is. And there are several other settings that you can look into here in the prettier documentation. All right, the next visual extension is going to be bracket pair colorizer. Now there is the original and then there is a two. And I have the second one installed and I will just uh, read this for you in the FAQ the differences between version 1 and 2. So 2 uses the same parsing engine as VS Code, which greatly increases speed and accuracy. The new version was released because settings were cleaned up, breaking backwards compatibility. So the second one seems to be the way to go. Now what it does is it colorizes your parentheses, brackets, and curly braces. So you can easily see its beginning and end. It also adds this line and, and makes a bit of a box around the content that is within the bracket that you've highlighted. So this one is yellow and it's showing me the content within that. If I go down here and click on this one, it shows me that one and then that one. It's just a visual representation to make it easier to identify what section of the code that you're looking at. Now the colors are customizable. These are the default colors. And the next extension, which I'm sure you've noticed, is uh, these colors here in the margins. And that extension is called indent rainbow. And all it does is add these colors to the margin to easily identify what portion of the code you should be looking at. So sometimes the indentations get a bit out of hand and you're kind of confused as to where you're at. And so these help. 
Okay, so that's all of the visual extensions. Now let's get into the functional extensions. The first one is auto rename tag. All right, an auto rename tag. They have a demonstration here. If you rename the beginning tag, it will automatically change the ending. Same with the ending. If you change it, it automatically changes the beginning tag. So this just saves time. You change it on one, you don't have to go change the other. And sometimes the other one may be way down the page and you don't want to go search for it. So when you change the opening tag, it automatically changes the closing tag. All right, the next extension that we're going to look at is called REST Client. So this extension is very helpful for a front-end developer or even a full-stack developer when you're working with a back-end API. So if you want to see what that API's response is, we can get that response from within VS Code. Now this extension is very similar to a program called Postman, which is an external program. The main benefit of using this extension is that it's all in VS Code. You don't have to go to another program. So the way this extension works is let me go to my files and I'm going to add a new file and I'm just going to name it request.http. All right, now within this file, I can just type a request. So we'll say this is going to be a get request. And we're going to use the JSON placeholder. So HTTPS JSON placeholder .com slash posts. And you'll see this button here pops up, send request. I'm going to close the sidebar, control B. And so when I hit this send request, it automatically opens another window here and we get our headers so we have a 200 ok and we have the json that it returned so json placeholder returns uh, 100 posts so we can see all of those with their title body id user id and so this is an easy way to test and inspect your backend apis and we can have multiple requests in here so we'll just separate them with triple hashtag and then this time let's do a post request and we'll use that same HTTPS uh, JSON placeholder posts. And then this time we have to set our headers. So we'll set the content type to application JSON. And then we'll send the data. So we'll just include the title. And we'll say new post. And then the body this is a new post all right so now if i hit send request on this one we we'll see that we get a 201 created and then we'll get returned to us what we sent it plus an id so we know that there was 100 posts originally and now this is 101 so that worked so this is just a very easy way to test and look at the responses that you're getting from your backend apis all right, the next one that we'll look at is called CSS Peak. And this one allows you to peak your CSS definition from your HTML file. So this is very helpful if you have a large CSS file and it's hard to search through. We can actually hit control and hover over a class and it automatically peaks the definition for us, shows us what it is. And then if we click it, it will take us directly to the CSS file to that actual class. So very helpful, speeds up the process. And then if there is one that happens to have multiple definitions, it'll tell you, click to show. And if we click that, it will actually stay within the HTML file and pop up this new window uh, where we can actually make alterations here and then just close this window without having to actually go to the CSS file. So this extension helps you to navigate between your HTML and your CSS much quicker. All right, the next extension is HTML CSS support. So this adds class completion to HTML. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to my CSS file. I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to add a test CSS auto complete. I'm just making the name very long so that it, you know, it's something that you don't want to keep retyping, right? Uh, so we'll just add something. Easy here, color blue. All right, so we've added this new class to our CSS. Now in our HTML, let's say we want to add a new div here with that class. So we'll use Emmet, we'll say dot, and I'll just start typing, test, and there it is. 
it's in our suggestions now. So if I just hit tab on that, it will automatically create that. So without that extension, you would have to type this entire class every single time you want to use it. So again, this extension just speeds up the process. All right, the next extension is Live SAS Compiler. And Live SAS Compiler will compile your SAS into CSS. Now I have a SAS for Beginners video where we actually install this and set it up. Uh, we go into a bit more depth than I will go into here, but I will show you the basics here. So there are a couple of settings that you're going to want to set once you install this. So if you press Control or Command comma, go to Settings and just type in SAS, you should see Live SAS Compiler here, and then Edit in Settings JSON. So these are the settings that you're going to want to add. So Live SAS Compile Settings Format, and it depends on if you're in a production environment or a test environment. But in production, you'd want to set the format to compressed and then your extension name to .min.css. So it's going to minify and compress automatically your CSS file. And then the save path, uh, my personal preference is I always set up a distribution folder. And then within that, I'll have my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. My main SAS file or SCSS file is going to be in the root outside of the distribution folder. Uh, now I have these set to expanded and just normal .css because in a lot of my tutorials I will write the SCSS and then show the compiled CSS and I don't want it to be minified because you wouldn't be able to read it. And then the last extension here is live sass compile dot settings dot generate map and set that to false. So by default it creates a map file which I have never needed to use so set that to false and that's one less file that you have to track. All right, I'm not going to save those settings. And so to demonstrate SAS, let me go to my files here. So like I said, I would normally in the root create a SCSS folder. And then within that folder, I would create my main.scss. And then we'll just create some basic SCSS here. All right, I'm just going to set the body margin zero adding zero and then I'm going to nest so let's say h1 we'll just set the color on that to blue all right so this is obviously not normal CSS we're using SAS nesting so I can save this and nothing is going to happen yet because we have to hit watch SAS so once we hit that our output comes up it says it's watching we can close that and what it actually did is it compiled it and created my distribution folder. And then it created the CSS folder and the main.css file. So now if I, we look at the main.css file, it has created or compiled it into normal CSS. So if you're unfamiliar with SAS, uh, there are a lot of great features. Um, one, of the, one of the great features is that it automatically adds vendor prefixes. So if for compatibility, you don't have to worry about typing all of the different web kits and other things that you have to do for compatibility. It does all of that for you. All right, let's move on to the next extension, which is Live Server. Live Server basically just creates a local development server with live reloading capabilities. I use this in just about every one of my videos. It's very helpful whenever you're creating a website so if we go to the HTML file here, let me just remove what I created there. All right, and once you've installed that extension, you'll see this button at the bottom, go live. So if we hit that, all right, the Chrome window pops up and we see our web page. Let me close the sidebar. So if I were to add a paragraph here and just put type in some lorem and then hit save, uh, it's going to automatically refresh onto the page and we'll see that paragraph. So this is a very helpful tool to speed up your website development. Uh, and so if you're wondering this uh, page here, this is a very simple to-do list that we create in my JavaScript for Beginners video. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check out that video as well and we build this from scratch. Alright, so those are my top 10 most used extensions. 
I do have one more extra that I want to show you. It's not really an extension. It's a built-in feature of VS Code, but I get a lot of questions about it. And that is Emmet. So Emmet is really a video on its own, but I wanted to quickly show you what Emmet is capable of. So let me create another file here and I'll name it contact.html. So with Emmet, we can drastically speed up the rate at which we can write our markup. So if I type exclamation mark, we get this pop-up here that says Emmet abbreviation. So if I hit enter, it's going to automatically create a, an HTML boilerplate for me. And then I can tab through these highlighted areas and change whatever I would like. So I'll say contact me and I hit tab again and it takes me to the body. Now within the body, I want to create an H1. So I'll just type H1 and again, Emmet pops up and I'm just going to hit enter, creates my H1 tag, contact me. All right. And then let's say I want to create a, a list. So I could say UL greater than li times four and it automatically creates a list skeleton for me that I can then fill out. Uh, let's say I want to create a button uh, with an ID of email me. All right, so that automatically adds the ID to the button and creates all of that for me. Well, let's say I want to create a paragraph with an ID or with a class of uh, main content. There we go. And then within this, we can create some placeholder text by using lorem and then typing in a random number. I'll just say 30, and that is gonna give us 30 words of lorem ipsum. All right, so there is a lot to Emmet. Um, let me know in the comments below, would you like to see a video on just Emmet? All right, and that's gonna be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. So before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And if you think this video or any of the videos on my channel might be helpful to someone else, please share them. And if my videos have helped you in any way and you have the means to do so, check out my Patreon. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.